and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Greetings, friends, indeed. Hi, Aisha. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Shem. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hi, Adina. Hi, Danny. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Barbara. How are you all? Welcome. I can't believe this week's going by so quickly. I've got, I've got my little bits and bobs here. So I did... Um, kind of applique the little <laughs> buses on there. We had to dress up this plain old yoke somehow, right? You know, I, I probably would have done something nicer if I'd known I was gonna need to do that. It's a little thin too. I think it's fine. Maybe it'll be nice and cool then because quilting cotton can be kind of heavy. <clears throat> How are you guys? Hi Lydia, how's it going? First thing I'm going to do is um, I, pr I washed the binding bonjour, uh, the, for the, that I'm going to be using for the facing and I, I really just got it wet in the sink. So I'm going to iron it dry, just make sure I shrink it down. So we got to do that first. But I think we're going to sew the entire shirt from start to finish today. Uh, I don't usually do buttons and buttonholes um, on camera only because... Um, I've done it a few times and you know, it's, it's just a lot of work. It's not a lot of work. It's it a lot of time. So I feel like it's not very in interesting, but I have two shirts to do it for. Maybe I'll have a fix it Friday tomorrow and we can, we can do them there. So, sorry, I got distracted with chat when I was trying to explain all that. <laughs> Hi Francis, how's it going? <laughs> so yeah, are we ready? Let's go to the iron because I'm going to... Iron this dry. I had a tough time picking binding because usually I like a really fun print. I think that's what binding is great for. It sort of frames whatever you're working on, you know, like adds some contrast. It adds um, some definition, like, def you know, defining like a frame, like a picture frame, right? But anything I do will show through on this white shirt. So we're just gonna keep it simple. It is a tone on tone print. This is one of the bindings I sell. So, you know, I need to advertise my stuff sometimes. I can't see chat though. I might go over and change the angle of the monitor. How many of you are working? You should be working. Hi, Amy. Hi, Julie, how's it going? I just saw, I just got a text right when I was doing that and it's funny. <laughs> I really want to reply. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Hi, Dee. Welcome. Oh, nice, Amy. Nice. Elena, your uh, jumpsuit turned out so cute with the mushrooms. Love it. You're working, Danny. We won't tell. 
So am I, right? Working, you know, for, I told my husband, I'm like, I'm making your shirt today. He's like, oh, cool. He really liked this fabric. He picked it out too. Not this binding, but you know, the shirt. He's told me so many fond stories of when he had this camper van and him and his dog, Sam, who was the sweetest dog. So I'm, I got to meet Sam because he still had her when we met. But you know that classic thing you do with your pets when people say, oh, how, how old is your, you know, insert cat, dog, whatever. And you're like, oh, he's three. <laughs> when in fact, they're more like nine or 12. He did that with Sam. For the longest time, he would tell me she was seven. And I remember like being together for a couple of years. I finally was like, you know, I feel like you told me that she was seven when I met you. And I was in front of his brother when I said this. And his brother was like, yeah, dude, she's not seven. And she was um, something like 12 or something. <laughs> She was a sweet dog. She ended up having diabetes. We gave her insulin. She was, oh, geez, I almost fell. I moved my fan across the room. Or not really across the room, but, oops, there we go. Is it Alina? Oh my goodness. Well, it turned out amazing. Oh, nice, Aisha. Oh, nice, Barbara. What are you gonna cut a muslin of? You're working, Adina? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't think I ever got the hang of that. Maybe I should practice with it. So here's the binding. It's just very simple, see? Little print, tone on tone print. You can probably barely detect there. I got the plaid. This was the other camp shirt I made for him. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little loop, a hanging loop at the back neck. I added that on the, the one I did in the, the video the, for the how to sew a camp shirt collar. And I, I mainly did that because I just felt the shirt was a little bit kind of, not blah or boring, but just so, it was just so monochromatic. And uh, um, I also like to put those, I frame them around my label just in case someone's sensitive, you know, with the labels being scratchy. So yeah. Hello, Tattooed Mama. Oh, you're working on a purse. Your own pattern or uh, someone else's? Hi, Eliza. Nice, D. You're sewing up your Alcott. Oh, nice. I've made that, right? I made, is it the Alcott that I made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Alcott I made. And when I was at Hearts, they gave it to me. It's so comfortable. I love it. Your Shea Shim Factory. Yes. <laughs> You're watching your kids, not me. <laughs> All right, uh, here, let's make this little hanging loop so it's ready to go. I think I'm just gonna, there's a little like snip in this. Maybe the shorter side would actually be long enough. Do you think that's long enough? That's long enough, yeah. Let me get the loop turner too. Here we go. All right, so we're just gonna sew those right sides together. It's kind of narrow to do much else. You need to make the seam allowance no wider than the space that's gonna be left behind. Otherwise, you, you won't be able to turn it, unless you trim it down, you know. These don't have to be on the bias either. It's just a little scrap piece. They are muted. I am not. <laughs> the Babylon by Hills Handmade. Oh. I haven't heard of Hills Handmade. Do they mostly do bags and things? So, uh, D, you're working on a finish. You're finishing off a sleeveless shirt. So, Shem yesterday kind of got me on the rabbit hole of making a... Um, I didn't want to use this side. I wanted to use this side. Neither end is good. Like, this one has a little angle. So, we're going to... Do that, and this one had, I think, two cuts in it. But I don't want to lose my back stitch. So let's get rid of that. And uh, so I t went. I took the blue a dress pattern because I was just like, let's just see where we're at with yardage, right? I had to go in the other room to the big conference table. I laid it out there, and I was like, oh, I could probably make this work, but the amount of brain power it was going to take for the space that I had, 
If I would have had a nice big flat table where the fabric could all be flat, I could probably do it, but I, I just felt like it was kind of dicey, you know? And um, I also was kind of second guessing the princess seams. So I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna see what I got, you know, like back in here. And then I started drafting, drafting a whole pattern, a whole bias dress pattern when I just did that recently. And I don't know why I just didn't go for that one. I just, I, you know, I was kind of distracted in the afternoon. And so I was just, I, and I didn't even do a sketch. That's always a bad sign, but if the pattern's almost done, so I might try it out this afternoon. I'm kind of excited. <clears throat> <laughs> really, Shim? Oh, that's hilarious. You've only gotten the Babylon, which I pay for, and the Southeast Travel Pouch. Free pattern made especially. Oh, cool. I used to sew a lot of clear vinyl. The little bust on the yoke. Like, oh, thanks. Yeah, no worries, Eliza. I feel like the cutting streams are always a, you know, if you're going to only get to watch a str one stream, maybe sewing is more relaxed. More, I don't know. Cut cutting, I guess, is relaxed. I just feel like it's kind of short. You just recently started making clothes. You learned how to make my daughter crop tops. My husband wants a shirt and stuff. Oh, cool. But in linen, nice. Um, linen can be a little bit fiddly just to kind of give you a little heads up. If you make a shirt like this, it can kind of stretch and grow. So stay stitch seams, like stay stitch your neckline, um, your armholes. Just stay stitch those at least. I guarantee when you go to put the collar and you're going to be like, this isn't even the right pattern because the linen is kind of like, I'm going to stretch out and relax. And you're like, no, I don't want you to do that. You know, you're using the call 6696, but have had to do so many changes. I might as well go. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, yes, Jim, there absolutely is. I don't know about camp, but there's just definitely a sleeveless bias dress with those rulers. That was always kind of the plan to do bias something. And then I was like, okay, I'm not gonna use it for a camp shirt. Maybe I'll use it for my bias dress pattern. And then I just kind of veered off and did, I don't know, doing both. I think it's gonna be really cute though. Yeah, camp dress, Libby's making a camp dress. Yeah, no problem for the tips. Do you need to clip the curves of the hem after sewing the binding on and before understitching? I am thinking yes. You have curves on your hem. Is it like a, a shirt tail hem? Yes. Clip the curves, understitch, clip, then understitch. Okay, we've got our little thing. I'm gonna stop fondling it and let's get going here. <laughs> do you say, need to send me more yardage? I mean, I think I can do it. I think I'll know more this afternoon. <laughs> you wanna make this happen? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I do too, that's why I got, I got three yards, you know, technically that's enough for a non-biased dress, but I was just so distracted at hearts that day. Cause I was meeting all you guys, it was fun. Okay, I didn't trip on that cord, that's nice. Sure too, yeah, 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 okay. I made a camp dress with the Gilbert pattern. Does the Gilbert have a bus, a side bus dart then, Elena? My problem with doing a camp dress, because I, I would really like it just to be like loose and kind of straight down, but kind of, you know, gently fitted. I never look good in those and then I don't wear it. It does have bus, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. That's a nice sentiment. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think it'll be necessary. If it is, I don't mind buying more either. I have some um, Hawaiian fabric in my cart for my dad. He's He wants some Hawaiian shirts. My mom made him. Well, she didn't sew them. She had them made two Hawaiian shirts. You guys, maybe some of you have seen these. And she had the, the it's like a thing. And they take your pet and they kind of, layer your pet inside like hiding behind the leaves of the Hawaiian print. When I first saw it, I was like, okay. He showed up at my house wearing it the other day and he loves it. So the only thing is like, it was really long and I don't think it's a natural fiber. So I feel like it's gonna be hot, you know? So I was like, I'm gonna make him a Hawaiian shirt. His birthday's coming up in August. You've seen those, Elena? Yeah. 
I mean, it was it was cute, but it's definitely, you know, you don't even notice the pets at first, and all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> so, yeah. All right, sorry. Okay, we're going to sew this pocket on. If I'm sewing this whole shirt, maybe I should, you know, chill with the chatter. All right. So I have my little yellow mark here. I don't know if you can see. Would you like, guys like me to zoom this in a little more? Just tell me. I marked this one a little differently where I just found the center here. I'm going to stick it a little above the yellow line that I created like that. We can even do a little more like that. We'll just put a couple pins in. This is the chat of the whole point. Absolutely. That is exactly why I do this. I wanted to be able to talk with other people who like to sew. Sewing on quilting cotton is such a pleasure. And it's so rare if you're a garment sewist that you get to use quilting cotton for a garment. Oh, I forgot I made my length really short to top stitch around that little camper van on the yoke. I'm gonna French seam the shirt today uh, and same with the vent on the side. And I'm gonna use the threads tutorial that someone linked in my chat because I've never done it that way and it looks really nice. So I'm gonna do it that way. Um, and mainly the difference is that they curve the seam. And if, you know, like, cause most of the time you see this, you see a French seam with a vent, you're gonna have a little visible cut on the inside in the seam allowance where you had to release the vent from the seam, right? Well, they have this nifty little curve they do, and I'm gonna try that. Um, there is still a potential for a raw cut, but it's not obvious. It's very, very much hidden, and I love that idea, so. Plus, I love threads. They're not what they used to be, but at the same time, the world is not the same. <laughs> when it comes to media and magazines, right? How'd you put the little buses on the, oh, I didn't do it during the stream. I cut them off. I put some um, double-sided fusible behind them. My plan was to turn under the edge and stitch them down, or I could have blanket stitched it. I almost blanket stitched it, but I really thought like it, that would distract from the little van unless I used white, you know? Um, so I just decided to stitch it down. Just I, it's just a, it's just top stitch down. But I have double sided fusible, so it's glued from the behind the the. the it's glued on there <laughs> and stitched. You know, like making making muslin things because it feels like a waste of time. Oh goodness, that's fighting words, tattooed mama. Muslins are absolutely wor worth it, but you don't always have to do one. And you don't have to do a whole thing. I don't do all the details. When I do a muslin, literally I'll do the shoulder seams, the side seams, one sleeve. I don't even put the collar on. I just wanna know how's it hit fitting and hanging, unless it's like a specific aspect that I really wanna check out, you know? Okay, we're gonna do the yoke to the back now and I don't do the burrito method. I'm just going to warn you. I have nothing against it. We've dubbed my method the taco method. I've been doing it since before burritos were invented. No, I'm just teasing. But I have been doing it since before the burrito method came out. I didn't even know that was a thing. But I think it's really cool and it's absolutely a legit way to sew it so the uh, yoke, all right, this has like these little outer pleats as opposed to it being in the center. And now I'm gonna do the back yoke first. So let's put this right sides together. Right sides to the inside of my shirt.
you think is a prototype. Yeah. I mean, if you have the time and inclination, you're willing to make more or have some that are just like a work in progress, then absolutely. You don't have to. Feels like less of a waste of time. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think knits are super forgiving too, and they don't require as much of a muslin experience, you know? They're so they're, they're so um, forgiving in the fit. You might not even have any issues at all. I feel like I didn't pleat that enough. Look at this, I'm getting a little bit of slack here. Oh wait, I forgot my other yoke. <laughs> I forgot my other yoke. I usually do this seam at the same. Why is this not fitting? And maybe my um, quilting cotton has relaxed a little bit. I know the fabric that I cut the yoke out in is is gonna be prone to stretching. All right, so I usually I do the seam at the same time. I'm gonna do it from this side so I can actually see where I sewed just now. I haven't done this in two steps in a, a little bit. Probably get a nicer result though. I won't, won't uh, pretend to ignore that fact. All right, let's iron it. So let's just pull this one up first. And pull this one up. There's a lot of wrinkling in my fabric. Let's get rid of some of it. Let's make it look nice while we're sewing it. It looks really long. There we go. Look how cute that is. <laughs> I like it. It's even cuter sewn, right? That should be a, um, a label. It's even cuter sewn. Cause you know how like sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know about this fabric. I don't know if it'll look cute in this design. Everything looks better once you've sewn it into the garment. It just looks like it's supposed to be like that. I mean, obviously we definitely see garments where we're like, eh. but most of the time your instinct was correct. And I, and I think that oh, for a lot of sewers, the hardest part is deciding, oh, is this fabric gonna work in this pattern? Oh, it were held up really good. I love stretch poplin. I love it. Hi, Casey. You're teaching your father to sew with this pattern with all the patterns off the yoke seam. Oh, really? It maybe then it is. I do feel that feels familiar. But you know, when I just did the quilting cotton, it fit perfectly. So I have a feeling it's this fabric here because this fabric is less stretchy. See, this is like a sheeting. Look at, very different. So this one right here has no stretch at all. It's not a stretch, this isn't a stretch fabric but fabric inherently in a cross grain will have a little bit of give like this, you know? Like if you think about, if you were to think about like weaving fabric and seeing every individual fi fiber, if they were really skinny and really tight together, there's gonna be less give, but quilting cotton's looser woven than a sheeting. So there's gonna be a little give. And if you do the length grain, it's a whole nother story. See, there's not really length in the length or stretch in the length grain. So, um, and on top of the fact that there's two pleats, that's room for error right there. You could absolutely have a little bit bigger or smaller pleat, depending on how it's marked. So if it's a little off, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, interesting, Casey. That, that's a really interesting thing. I tend to um, stretch things out as I sew. 
I'm a polar. My tension is looking just a little bit um, funny to me. Maybe it's not. It looks really good on this side. I think sometimes when I can't see the stitches very good because it matches, oh, they, it looks okay. I tend to think then it's really tight or something. All right. Okay, so this is my way to do a um, the shoulders. So um, we have this right, right side up. We're going to put this right sides together here. And then I'm going to separate these yolks and flip them over. Right, the, put the uh, inside yolk now, right side to wrong side. I take a second to just kind of line up this little edge and not lose track of which seam I'm actually sewing. Because I, you know, can. And then I get it all arranged. Pull the bottom layer, which is the, this in this case, the inner yoke, the shoulder of the garment, the yoke. I have a video for this. If you're, if you're interested, like you've never learned the burrito method or you don't really like scrunching up the garment inside. <clears throat> You can check it out, but they both work equally the same. They're both great, yeah. So, and there you go, you just, it's done. All right, let's do the other one. Does the quilting cotton breathe well? Yes. Yeah, any kind of cotton or natural fiber is gonna breathe much better. Oh yeah, Eliza, exactly. Yeah, for the Donnie. Um, all right, same thing here. Stretch when I move it around. So I'm trying to remember to press, which is <laughs> yeah. I mean, like there, there are there are people who will de dedicate their channel on um, how to press. You know, like not pushing, lifting. Hi, Michelle. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not going to wick away the moisture, is it, Elena? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't see, you know, a mini runners wearing a uh, cotton. I, I take that back though. A lot of the like hardcore runners, they love their race t-shirts. <laughs> and I always crack up about that because um, there, it's like for me, when I moved here, it was so hot. I was like, oh, there's no way I can wear a cotton t-shirt. I would if I'm working out in the yard, but I, when I'm on a run or something, I'm wearing something breathable and, and wicks the moisture away. I did this the harder direction this time. It works either way. So wear it whichever way you pull the, turn your fabrics. All right, let's iron that. I love clean finish insides too. I feel like the garment feels better, a little, a little better on because the seams are usually lower profile. And if you don't think you're gonna ever have to get back into the shirt to do a fitting adjustment or something, it I think it's very much more stable and secure. It'll last longer. Taco method. <laughs> we did a taco bar on Sunday when my parents came over. And then uh, my husband went out of town and it was just me. And I had all those leftovers and I've been making like a bowl for lunch every day and it's been amazing. I got everything, all the fixings, all to myself. A hand stitch for one step. I was wondering how I can machine finish it all. Oh, cool. Well, which step was it? Judge Team Allowance for the nice. Yes, I did, Casey. Good question. I did add seam allowances, and I'll tell you where. If you're interested, I'm going to be French seaming this one. I, I like to flat fell um, the men's shirts or shirts in general, like collared shirts. But because this has a vent, I'm going to do French seams. And so I added another quarter of an inch on the side seams here. 
and this armhole and on the cap of the sleeve and the underarm of the sleeve, not the hem, that doesn't matter. It does feel posher. Oh, that's interesting, Elena. So that must be a thing, maybe a lot of people do that. Yeah, I exa exactly, Shem. I think that serger thread can be really scratchy. Uh, where are we at? We're at the collar already. Okay, so we have the collar and we have the facing. So we're gonna do some, I am going to Hong Kong finish my facing edge. So I know that's a little bit extra. I'm just kind of into this method right now and I like using it wherever I can. You know how that is, right? <laughs> so um, that means I'm gonna kind of do like a hybrid of binding um, and, and kind of just edge edging it. So you'll see it's a lot easier than binding. But you, if you don't have a serger and you need to finish this edge, you can literally just turn it under and stitch it down. Just turn it once. You don't have to turn it twice. I promise that little edge, even if it has a little bit of fraying, once those fall off eventually, nothing else will, it'll be fine. Um, you could just overlock it. If you have an overlocker, that's true too. So I'm gonna do this shoulder edge and around. So I'm gonna turn this corner and I'm gonna do this right sides together. So my binding is too wide for this right now, I think three quarters of an inch is ideal. Um, I usually don't, I'm not that brave and I do it start at an inch and then I still cut a lot off. So I think three quarters is fine. How, why does the vent dictate how I do the side seams? I don't really have a great method for flat felling the side seam with a vent. That's it. French seaming is far more compatible with the vent. Oh, the very last step of the yoke steps. Instead of slip stitching the inner yoke to the shoulder seam, I fold the shoulder seam allowance under an edge stitch from the outside. Yeah, there you go. That's how I did it in my video. I have two ways to do that. I will either fold it under and stitch in the ditch, but if you have a, if you don't have a yoke seam, like you have um, seam allowance at the shoulder, you can just catch it with your machine on the seam allowance. All right, so this is how I'm gonna do this. Right sides together. And I'm just gonna sew it at a quarter of an inch seam. And I'm not gonna pull this right here, especially around the corner. I'm gonna do like one diagonal stitch and then come down the side here. Let's zoom in a little too. I feel like the camera's really far away. Boop. Meow. Is that too low? It's kind of close, huh? <laughs> All right, if it's too close, let me know. Still checking my tension, making sure. Look at these tiny little seams they do when they make binding, like professionally. It's like a 16th of an inch. Make sure if you use binding, you pre-wash it. And I don't joke around about that because um, you don't want the binding to shrink, but your facing doesn't. It, it'll be a pain in the butt to deal with, with, with like with ironing and stuff and it'll like draw up the facing on the inside of the garment and make it kind of poke and ripple out, make the outer garment like ripple and not lay nicely against the body. All right, so here's that little corner again. So I can kind of approach it. I'm gonna turn, I got really close to the edge there. One diagonal stitch. I kind of went too far though, but all right. And now I'm gonna trim this little corner here and we're gonna go press it. These aren't the ones I use for tips. And then let's see, where's this one? Here's this one here. This one's a little better. 
from that corner, and now we're gonna go iron. You think you see it? Oh man, I feel that like in my bones right now. <laughs> Um, well, it just depends, Michelle. I don't like what kind of, uh, what's happening at the shoulder in your garment. Do you have a yoke or is it just a shoulder seam? And then there's no back neck facing, right? All right. So we're pressing this really good like this. Now we're just going to turn it to the wrong side. It'll be a little awkward around the corner. Uh, the quilters out there could probably do a nicer job with that corner there. What I like about this is it leaves my full seam allowance of my shoulder. So I have a lot to grab onto to secure it um, in the very end. Oh, that's still hot. Okay, so I got it from this side, make sure everything looks good. I'm gonna kind of loosen this up a little at the corner there. That's nice and flat, I think. I was really careful not to pull the binding because I don't want to distort that outer edge there, right here. Wait, I missed it. Took my headphones off. Is there a good way to wash bias binding is already cut? Yeah, that's how I would do it, Sydney, if I were thinking ahead. I throw it in a lingerie bag and throw it in the washing machine with everything else. Uh, this one, I got soaking wet here at the office and then I ironed it dry with no steam. And I did that at the very beginning. That's what I was doing. There is a back yoke only, no front yoke. Okay, so that is, a that is, um, I'm gonna do mine. That's how I'm gonna do mine today, Michelle. So um, it's it's tricky because you're, since your yoke clean finishes the shoulder, you're like left with nothing to attach that facing to if there was a loose shoulder seam. So um, I stitch in the ditch. There is nothing more um, fancy. <laughs> you can't catch it in that yoke seam. That ship has sailed when we get to that point. Hi, Donna, how's it going? All right, Dee, see you later. Have a good one. <clears throat> lingerie bag. Like, honestly, I got a lingerie bag free with these jog bras I bought a long time ago and I use it for everything. But um, if you just have like, even like a muslin bag, like anything, I would just put it in, in some sort of thing that's washable, just so that it doesn't turn into a big old knot. That's all, that's the only reason you need to keep it separate. What are you talking about, Aisha? This has been the most engaging content ever. She missed so much. Okay, so now on this last step here, I'm going to stitch in the ditch from the right side. I am not the best stitcher in the ditcher. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna stitch in the ditch right here like this and we're gonna secure that, that little binding edge down. We don't need to turn it under I'm using a size 14 needle. If I were using a bigger needle, I'd probably, um, it'd probably look worse. I tend to use big, big needles. So thankfully I'm using a 14 today. There's not a whole lot to grab onto to kind of spread this seam apart. Normally in Stitch in the Ditch, you go, you know, you kind of open it up a little bit. And some machines are gonna give you a headache with this because like the, there's all these little subtle things that every machine does a little bit different. Oh, hi Aisha, another one. <laughs> um, oh yeah, exactly. I, you can do that, you can totally do that. Um, 
<laughs> I know it's true. But I just want to say this because if you're seeing me do this and you're like, oh, you're making that look a little easy and it's just a straight stitch, so I can do that. And then you get to your machine, your machine's kind of like pushing your your foot keeps falling off and making it kind of wiggly. That is just sometimes how, like what foot you have on your machine. Um, home machines have so many different feet that sometimes the grooves underneath won't play nice with whatever you're sewing. So don't think it's just you. Sometimes there's things at play that, you know. And so this is how it looks on the right side, right? Nice and clean. And on the back side, I have this excess here that I'm gonna trim off. You don't have to if you don't want to but I will, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's totally a possibility, Aisha. The um, Donnie collar is also not a camp collar. It's a notched collar, so it's a little different. I haven't sewn it though. I know, I think they call it a camp collar, but it's actually technically not, and they sew a little bit differently. I love the Donnie shirt. I think it's so cute. Not with, not with binding, Shem. Binding doesn't fray. I'm kind of fiddling with my corner here. Cause see, this always, see how it kind of collapses down? That's fine, but you know, like I know if I were a quilter, I would have done a nicer job, you know, I would have done like maybe some sort of tricksy um, mitering or something. Yeah, it is, I know, I should, it's really cool. I mean, we love, we love clean finish, right? So nice. Okay. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna trim this down because I don't really want it there. And I'm gonna make it look really awkward when I do it here. <laughs> Leave it to me <laughs> to make it look harder than it is. This is kind of one time where I'll actually leave the the uncut the side I'm not cutting underneath usually when I cut things I, I always cut them from the um like this I would cut it like this so that I know I I can't see it well is that, is that what I do yeah I would do it so that uh, I have my wait how wait I'm kind of confusing myself this is work this is what I'm doing I am doing it the way I normally would don't listen to me it's just a little awkward because the binding sort of hugs the fabric a little bit, even though we didn't stretch it. The camp shirt, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of hanging up back there. That fabric was really thready. And on the inside, it is very thready. The binding's not thready. <laughs> the shirt is. <laughs> <laughs> sorry Dina they need to understand that this is your time <laughs> to spend with us <laughs> okay I'm not cutting very straight and I'm just going to let it go because I'll make it too short I never use this finish very much, which is kind of funny since I'm like seriously binding's biggest advocate. And I don't know why, I just think it's just, you know, you get kind of in your groove of the things you like to do. And I never just spent much time with this finish and it's, I've done it on certain things. Um, I did it like on the V-neck coat last year. Um, I actually think I bound those seams. I don't think I did Hong Kong at all. I might have called it that even. 
but yeah. Work really cramps our style. Work, kids, they're all in there. We love them, but they just don't let us be sometimes. Okay, our facings are prepped and ready. Now let's sew our collar together here. So we're gonna sew the center back seam. I've trimmed all my seam allowances down on my neck, my collar, my yoke neck, my collar, my facing neck, all of that area, the perimeter of the collar, or the, yeah, the collar, um, I trimmed all of it down so that the seam allowance is one quarter of an inch. You married the boss. <laughs> so we can add spouse to that list, Donna. <laughs> We're gonna press the seam open. Um, let's see, is that my, there's my, looking for my notches so that I make sure that I put my um, shoulder line together. That does not look like, there's notches, there's notches. Oh, there we go. That didn't line up for a second there. I had it upside down. All right, so. So I'm sewing all this a quarter inch. I feel like it's a lot easier to um, get your collar in. Any of these little tiny fiddly seams, I always recommend cutting it down to a quarter of an inch or whatever the equivalent is in millimeters. I think that's 6.3 millimeters, 6.35 to be exact. Look at that, that notch is on the wrong side. I've notched that in the wrong spot. That's funny. I'm going by the shape. All right, so let's trim this corner right here. And this one here. And let's go and press it. I don't need to press any of that, right? No, no. You did, I <laughs> How can I find a boss for me? <laughs> I've been wanting a boss too. Today it was declared partial shutdown, so everyone to get home safely because of the passing of, oh. There's a storm. Actually, everyone really knew you were the boss. All right, so I like to just press the seam. I don't really care which direction I'm pressing it, but it will press along the edge of the collar seam a lot nicer if I just kind of press it to one side. Let me make this also look awkward. All right, just get it, just get it nice and like flat. Let's get rid of this thread. And now we're gonna line up the 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 um, collar line. Did I call this? Yeah, this shoulder notch. Yeah, you're gonna line up your raw edges here. Line them up, and then let the collar do what it wants to do at that edge. Because your collar, your top collar is gonna be a little bit wider than your under collar. It better be. This is why I don't like bias under collars though, because sometimes even if it's smaller it sneaks out and this one's doing that right here. I need, I need something to, I need my awl, but it's over there. So let's pull this corner out with a pin a little bit. Pins are never that great. I can't believe I used to use a pin. Oh, I used to use a seam ripper. The awl is just like, hundred times better. Oh yeah, those corners look terrible. <laughs> we'll fix them in a second. Okay, make sure that you can't see your under collar on the right side. And see right here, I feel like it is trying to creep, so we're gonna pull it down. Pull. I'll show you what I mean. So um, I'm always trying to, you see this little tiny ridge right here? That's the outer collar, this is the outer collar. 
and this is the inner collar. So we, I kind of like to see a little bit of that ridge on the under collar side. Let's get this corner a little nicer though. I'm gonna push it in a little bit and reset it. It's quilting cotton. <laughs> I'm not gonna get uh, tailored shirt results. That looks pretty good though. Let's fiddle with this one. Let's accidentally pull this corner out because we're fiddling too much. Okay, that's not bad. Don't stay stitch this close. Hi, Terry. I am. It's so loose and airy. I love it. Oh, interesting, Aisha. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna put this on using that method that I kind of developed. I gotta remember how to do that too. And where's my little loop? Okay, so here's my loop. Here's my label. He is a cutie patootie, so he gets this label. And he likes the hanging loop. Which I probably could have pressed as well. I'm gonna do some tricksy folding here like this. Like that, something like that. Let's push it up a little bit more. Something like that. I like that. I hate this ridge. I have this ridge. My machine, like my last machine was more flush with my table, but I did have a bigger gap. <laughs> but I don't like this ridge. All right, so let's just tack this in here. Something like, like that. Yeah, I like that. Cutie. I can do a whole nother loop with that. Maybe I'll just save it. That looks so cute. <laughs> oh, I know. The one from the Erica Siskrin. So cool. All right. Can Sarami remember how to do her method? All right, so it helps when I've had to record a step a few times, like, because I'm like, oh, that doesn't explain it very good, you know? Like, I figure out a different way. So I remember this one. So we're going to go up, and we're going to sew the collar right here. And I said do, like, a one and a half inches past. I'm actually going to experiment with going way past that. I'm gonna go like up here. Where's my not my shoulder notch? You guys think I did this upside down? I thought my shoulder notch was on this one. I could swear I saw it. It's so subtle. I'm folding my collar to see how it's gonna look. I mean, it looks okay. Right? That looks okay. <laughs> um, well, I use it for uh, something interesting on the inside, but often to soften the edges of the labels that I use, not this one. But this one, you know, you could use that. But the last shirt I made, I put one in, my husband's like, ooh, I like the I like the hanging loop. I love it when they have those. He never uses it, by the way. But I think he just likes it. So it's just a hanging loop. Yeah, I hope so, Terry. I mean, you know? <laughs> All right. We're going to... I'm going to... I think what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm experimenting a little bit. 
I'm going to go like a quarter of an inch to before the seam here, which is like more like a half inch away from the end of my facing here. Let's just see, because I'm, I'm thinking that this would be even a nicer finish. All right, so we're just going to sew up the center front, the facing right sides together to the shirt. Should we zoom out at all? <clears throat> Let me know. Please, please be matching. I didn't check to see if you were matching. Okay, you are. All right, here we are at the top. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Here's my collar. Uh, you want the under collar facing down towards the, the shirt, right? Because this is how it's gonna be worn, right? And then we're gonna come up here. You want this also, this collar, you want this to line up to the notch. Like you see, here's my notch. So he, you see here my notch right there? I'll get my pin out of the way for a second. So let's just extend this notch straight down so if you're not using a quarter inch seam allowance, this is really, really important because this is another reason why having a narrow seam allowance kind of helps you keep track of where this lines up, right? So if you were to draw a line straight down and then find where your seam allowance intersects that line, that's exactly where your collar on the its seam line should intersect that spot. So for me, it's a quarter of an inch down. So I want this spot right here on the collar, a quarter of an inch in, to intersect this notch going straight down. What happens is a lot of times people do this, they angle it, right? So they put the point right here, and let me trim this interfacing off so you can really see what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of interfacing sticking out of my collar there. Right, so what they do is they put this little tiny point up to that cut edge right there, right? Now let's say your seam allowance was 5 eighths. Down, if we went 5 eighths right here, your collar point right here is a more than an eighth of an inch away from that center line, right? So this is the center line. And then you're going to be mad when you can't fit your collar in there. You're gonna have a quarter of an inch extra collar. And that's just right there where that can happen. Not to mention that when we're taking this straight piece and we're going around a curved collar, things are gonna happen anyway. If um, you used a linen and your shirt is all this bias in the linen, forget it. Your, your shirt is going, your neckline is gonna be an inch bigger. I guarantee it. And if you don't feel like you can ease it in there, you're gonna feel a little bit like, what do I do next? I have to cut a bigger collar, right? So, ah, oh, Elena, thanks. Thanks for coming to channel member. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I made the facing seam, no. I left the shoulder seam alone. I only reduced the seam allowance where I am sewing collar. So just this neckline. So um, that, that is, I just like underscoring this because this is something when I was learning to sew and the collar never fit, I'd get so mad and I always blamed the pattern company. Sometimes like there are patterns where they like to, you to ease the collar in and I don't really think that's necessary. Um, if, you, if you are using a linen fabric, yes, you're probably easing your collar in. If you're having a lot of trouble using something like a linen or something really loosey-goosey, put a stay stitch around the neckline and pull the bobbin threads to tighten it up a little bit. Don't put gathers in it, just tighten it up. I promise it won't show when you're done. So anyway, I just want to underscore this. You know, put your collar straight down. Yeah, no, I know it's going like this and you're like, how am I going to get this to, to pull over to the neckline? We're not worried about that right now. We're worried about achieving the intersection precision right here, right now. And then once we get there, we're gonna pivot along the neckline and we're gonna pull our collar with us, all right? So the lesson is over, you can relax now. <laughs> all right, so we're pivoting. My, my facing is going a little bit above my neck, so that's why it looks a little wider seam allowance. And we're gonna get to that collar. Now I'm on the collar. Here's my collar right here, and we're sewing through um, all layers right now, right? That's what I want to do, right? <laughs> I'm trying to remember my method. <laughs> and now um, I, I know I don't sew with pins and I'm not saying you need to do that at all. So I'm really sorry if that is a little 
disorienting that I'm not using pins. I just think it's easier for me. I like keeping these separate and I sort of hold them and guide them at the same time as I'm sewing. And that's because I feel pretty confident in that it's all lining up, right? Although I've lost my shoulder notch. So, all right, we're gonna go up here and I'm just kind of ooching along. I'm only worried about the inch in front of my needle and then I pull it over again, right? So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna just stop right here. It's like the shoulder line is right here. Right, we're gonna stop there. And now we're gonna do the other side. Oh, really, Lena? Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> for the fight. <laughs> it's ridiculous. What's, what is Shim and Terry talking about today? What's going fast? I mean, your, your, uh, your uh, summer camp sewing, Shim, is going faster this year. Like, it feels a lot, like, faster this year. All right, so this time, see, I'm going to pull that collar straight down right at that notch because we need it to intersect there. I guarantee, no matter how accurate you think you are, this is a problem so often. It really is. Um, all right, we're going to have to do this from this side this time. Not my favorite. All right, so we're just going to sew this straight up. Don't go crazy on your back stitch there because I actually am going to probably sew across the facing too. We're going to be cutting that back stitch off. <laughs> All right, so let's see where my facing is. Sometimes your facing gets smaller because we you've, inter, you've um, fused interfacing to it. That's why I keep checking, like, is my facing lining up? Sometimes it just doesn't after you've added interfacing to it. So you've got to take that into consideration. Like, see, look at my shirt's a little longer right now. Whoops. Didn't happen on the other side. All right, so a little bit fiddly. All right, so here we are. Here is that pinned section. There's my pin. So we're going to get this to kind of relax, like lay this against the... Um, facing edge here. Get this nice and relaxed. Don't won't let it do, be doing this. See that pulling there? We're just worried about the inch in front of the needle. All right, my needle's on the collar. Now I have a little bit more leverage because the collar is now a part of this. And I'm just going to hold these three loosely together and sew them. <laughs> it's a little fiddly. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna stop again before the shoulder seam. Like right there, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I don't know what you're talking about, Shim, and I feel like you're talking with someone else, so I don't comment on it. So I may skip your comment, and then I see something, I'm like, wait, what are they talking about? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, tr we're gonna trim this corner here. Trim this corner here. I have a dedicated how-to for this right now, so if this is too fast, you're not here yet, it's fine. Um, I don't think you actually, oh yeah, you, you do have to clip this curve. We're going to clip this curve we've just sewed. The more clips, the better the curve. Go, there's my spinach. We'll go like that. And then here's this one. Oh yeah, I'm on live chat. The only time it toggles off for me is when I do pop out chat, which I know you guys are probably know what that is, but sometimes I'll, I can remove the chat from the control room so that I can move it around on the screen so I can see more of some stuff. 
Um, and it reverts back to top chat every time. But Elaine is usually the one that says, hey, you're on top chat. Because it's usually when I like am sharing my computer screen. <laughs> okay, so, um, oh my God, how am I gonna get that in there? What the heck, look at that. Ooh, I do not feel confident about that. Where's my center notch? Can I do that? Can I get that in there? Oi. Oi, that's so much. Oh, you can do the pop chap too? Oh, okay, cool. Um, we're gonna put that easing stitch in this neckline right now <laughs> that I just talked about. I've made this shirt, this is my, fourth time making this shirt. <laughs> it's a little different every time. So see, I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. Every fabric acts differently. I have made this shirt before on camera, uh, like almost a year ago to the day actually. And it was in the, the, um, the dragonfly print for my husband. Oh, and you know, next month is menswear sewing month here. I'm gonna be making a button down shirt I've never made before by Merchant and Mills. Uh, that I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of. Um, I think it's newer. And then I'm also making something I have made before. I'm making the wardrobe by me uh, cargo shorts. I may even batch so batch so two at a time. Yeah, tattooed mama. That is kind of a problem with this pattern company for men. You've made six already. <laughs> I love this. I have made button downs a lot. But this is my first camp shirt that I've made for me and, and I wear. Yeah, it's navy with little dragonflies on it. Okay, that looks better, right? Look at that, now we're making it. No problem. And those gathers, they just won't show. Scout's honor. Let's get a little bit more there. All right, so now we're going to, trying to remember how I do this. Um, I do, I separate these collars out and we sew them separately now. So we're gonna finish sewing the facing to the top collar and we're gonna finish sewing the under collar to the neckline. So we're gonna just peel this apart. So I have my shirt up right now and we're just gonna peel this back just like this and we're gonna sync up our needle right at that spot where we stopped stitching. Much easier than it seems. Make sure you back stitch there. But, ooh, don't go that far. <laughs> don't go that far, you're gonna get a little tuck in your seam there, just like I just did. All right, and then we're gonna do this one here. And I'm doing this with the facing down against the machine bed. And then this right here is the um, collar right here. So, so you can get oriented and we're gonna approach the seam this time. Where's my seam at? It's right there, okay. You want this to line up, so. Like you don't want this to be left or right of this seam here. We're just continuing our stitching. All right, now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna do the collar only to the neckline here. Oh wait, did I do this right? Oh, I'm sorry, you know what, I didn't. You, you need to separate the collar out. Did I separate it over here? Oh, I didn't, okay, don't do it that way. Oh shoot. Sorry, I just developed this method and I'm still remembering how I do it. I was just watching this person talk about how they've been in a band for 20 years and they're really terrible about remembering the lyrics to their own songs. And I, I just can't imagine that, right? Like I, I can't imagine like 
if you write songs that you would forget the lyrics, but I've actually seen Billie Eilish do the same thing. She'll be like, I don't remember the, <laughs> like she'll look at her brother and her brother will be like, blah, blah, blah. And she'll, oh yeah, okay. So I guess it's a thing. It made me feel a lot better when I would forget something like this, you know? It's like, oh, trust me, I'm a professional. You don't understand what I'm doing right now, Julie? I'm seam ripping this out because I just made a mistake. <laughs> I do want to update that one because I definitely flubbed the sewing on that one. I forgot it was a waist facing. Yeah, it'll be clear in just a second. I just needed to separate these out. So, and I knew that, I, don't, I think I even said it, but I didn't do it. All right. so. This is where we stopped sewing. So pretend like I didn't do that little bit of sewing just now, right? So we sewed up our center front, our neck. We did all layers together. We stopped. These are all separate pieces right now, right? Now we're going to attach the top collar to the facing, the under collar to the shirt. We're separating it right here. And there's a video on this. Yeah, exactly, Elena, yeah. Well, and plus also to make sure all the like gear and everything is gonna work. All right, so we're just sewing. We've split the collar apart and we're just sewing each layer to the one it's closest to. Yeah, and this particular person was saying how their partner teases them about this and they've said we should get a teleprompter and they felt like that was admitting kind of like, oh, defeat about it. And it doesn't bug them that they forget their lyrics. They were like, whatever, it's just who I am, you know? And then the, uh, their partner requested a teleprompter. So they were pretty excited. They were like, oh, this isn't gonna be because of me, but I'm so excited we're gonna have a teleprompter. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's awesome. All right, so now we're gonna attach, so see, look here. We've attached our, all our layers here at the front, right? Now here we've attached just the facings to the collar and now we're gonna attach just the collar to the shirt. We've split right here and we're just continuing that line of stitches from the very beginning. We're almost done. We're sort of almost done with the shirt. <laughs> all right, and um, just gonna sew this around. I should have done it with the shirt side up because of all those gathers I just put in the neck. I don't want to get any tucks. So I'm just kind of feeling for them. We're gonna go all the way to the front. This one, you know, we don't have the, the facing doesn't end, so we can keep going. Why is that so thick there? Is that a seam? Or is that a tuck? There we go. I'll just take out any of the tucks if I get any. Hi, Ray, how's it going? You lurking? Nice, hope you're well. Hope your garden's doing good. Oh, I know why it's thick. It's because of my little hanging loop and all that. I'm just getting finding this little thread in pulling it a little more to make it a little tighter. That easing stitch I added. Uh, this isn't their instructions, this is my instructions. And it's not a notched collar, it's a, a camp collar. They're very different from one another. I know they're, they're very often mistaken how people word them, but they're very, very different. A, a notched collar, you can't button all the way up to the top, but a camp collar, you can. All right, here we go. Let's let's um, zoom out so you can get the whole picture. This isn't hard to do. It's just I haven't I haven't um, I've been doing it the other way all my life. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. See, look, see how it separates right here? We sewed all layers together here. We separate collar to facing, collar to shirt, 
collar to shirt, collar to facing, right? And now we're gonna do the last step. So we're gonna flip all this to the right side. That's clean, right? All this is clean. And now we're just going to turn this up and stitch it along this edge here. And right where we stopped sewing originally, right here, where all the layers are sewn together, we're gonna do a nice big clip right to that spot. You could have done it at the end before. And same with down here. So we're not clipping here, we're clipping into the collar right where we stopped sewing all the layers together. And this is gonna enable us to push all the seam allowance up into the collar like this and clean finish it just like that. All right, so now, see that right here? Poke this up. If you need to clip it better to get it all in there, do so. Clip it all up in there or push it all up in there. Make sure you keep your collar nice and flat. I didn't exit out of this thing. And um, one thing I like to do so you don't over rotate your collars, I kind of, I secure all these layers together like this so that when you're pulling on it, you don't pull this edge to the wrong side, right? So just give yourself a few, they're just like little helpers. So we're gonna do the, I did one here, I'm gonna do one here and then I'm gonna do the center and then we'll do in between. Just kind of get our landmarks going. So cover up your stitching. I do not like that pen. I like this pen. Oh, I do I like this pen. And then we'll do this one here. So remember that's right at that clip. Push all this in there. You can iron this too. I think I iron it in the video. The quilting cotton is so much more behaved than the other fabric I did in the video. All right, make, you know, give it a little tug, make sure everything's nice and flat. These are actually my favorites right now. And then now fill in the blanks here. All right, so there we go. Right, let's look at the other side. Just look before you sew, just in case you see something, you know? You don't wanna immortalize it and have to take it out. I never checked for tucks, but it looks like I dodged one there. I didn't get any tucks there. I think I have a tuck right there. It's an ironing mark, I can't tell, but it's on the under collar, so I'm not too worried about it either. All right, and so now we're just gonna edge stitch this between that point where we notched right there to the other point where we notched. And that's it, and we're done. And we're stitching on the collar. So get it in there, and then and pull this apart. Like, keep it nice and firm. The, the reason I do this this way is because if you, if you do it the way that, that most camp collar instructions have you do it, um, that's fine. That's a t perfectly acceptable way to sew it. But what happens is you get this little notch right here with raw edges where you flip it to the inside. This just prevents that. What Terry and I were saying is going fast was my jean sewing. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, it does seem like you already have all your fronts done. <laughs> all right, so where, you can feel that spot because it's where the seam allowances flip right here for me. Like that, and you're done. Yeah, it's that, that's that raw edge. It would never fit me. <laughs> My husband has no bumps, no bumps. <laughs> I have lots of bumps. <laughs> I have his shirt on the dress form back there. I can't even button it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Aisha. I have the ruler fabric, rainbow ruler fabric. <laughs> 
So, um, so yeah, here we are, we're done. So now let's give it a good pressing and then we're going to secure the facing here at the shoulder by stitching in the ditch, but let's look it over. See, look at how nice this is. So if you've ever had to sew a camp collar and you get this little notch from clipping your fabric to be able to turn it and you can see raw edges there, this prevents that and it clean finishes everything. You don't see anything on either side. I have a little tuck there, but I think it's the um, presser foot sometimes does this because there's not a tuck there. That's my easing thing and I'm not worried about it. It's like under the collar and I'm gonna just iron it within an inch of its life right now. <laughs> so let's do it. Okay. So first I'm gonna press my placket. Get rid of this thread here. Still didn't really press that nicely. There we go. That looks a little better. You can already tell. Get it to press right on the edge. And same up here. I think it's so cool how we can be, <clears throat> we, can, we can sew things for so long and there's still new ways to sew it. <laughs> Good job, Terry. Yeah, my husband did do that to me once and I was kind of shocked. I was like, wait, how long have we been together? Like he has been there when someone we know fairly well has asked me, um, oh, hey, could you hem some pants for me? And I would say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to hem, you know? And the look on their face is usually kind of like, wow, I thought you were really good, you know? I'm so confused and they almost have this look of pity. <laughs> and you know, like a, old me a long time ago would have been like, of course I know how to do that. I don't want to do it for you. But now I'm just like, I just kind of enjoy the puzzlement and you know, whatever. I can say whatever I want. <clears throat> and um, so I was surprised once that my husband came home and he was like, oh, hey, this gal, she went to Germany and she brought back this, like, she brought back a dirndl. Do you guys know what a dirndl is? And she needed it to be a different size. And I was like, yo, uh, I am not her, her, like, tailor, you know? And then she did the classic thing where she, she paid with a bottle of wine. I'm like, okay, great. I don't really drink, you know? <laughs> She did this twice, and I finally told my husband, I was like, uh-uh, don't do this. This is not okay. Hi, April. Oh, have a good work day. Nice seeing you. Um, what am I doing? Okay, so we're going to do this, call, this facing here. Wait, who'd you report, Adina? Oh, gosh, good. Hi. Oh, welcome back, Dee. We just finished the collar. All right, so right here, we're going to secure this facing here to the shoulder seam. And mine's poking up past it. Maybe um, I meant to tell you when we sewed this a long time ago, when we sewed this facing on the second step, right? We did all of our layers together. We stopped, and then we sewed the facing to the collar, that rest of that bit. You can turn back the facing like this along the shoulder seam. That's totally fine. I like that I don't have to here. And when I teach this method in my video, I tell you, finish this edge. However you plan on finishing it, finish it. Whether it's uh, overlocking, binding, a hem, or whatever, because it's really nice that you can just insert it into the seam right here. It's kind of the crux of the why this works so well. All right, so we're gonna get this nice and flat, right? 
I'm gonna pin this facing over here so it doesn't pull away because this collar is curved, right? So we're just getting this nice and flat, just like this. We want it to lay without being distorted. So I'm kind of tugging that collar there to kind of create the curve of that neckline, right? And now I'm gonna stitch a, or put a pin across this shoulder seam. And now we're gonna do the other side. Your husband does this all the time. Yeah, exactly. I think that um, in the case of this person, firstly, it tugged at his heartstrings that she had gotten a dirndl. He, you know, he's lived in Germany, he speaks German. He thought that was cool, right? But he also, you know, it's that he's proud of me. Like, I literally know it's because he's, he, it's like he wants to show off that I can do that, you know? And that, I, I get that. Like, that is very sweet. He's proud. He's like, let me show these people this, your skill or whatever, you know? Because it's not like this person was a boss. And I understand that. Like, when people have, like, a boss and they're like, oh, my boss wants you to do this thing. And they don't want to say no to their boss, you know? But I finally was like, dude, if you do this again, I'm going to take it to her and tell her, I'm sorry, I don't do this. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> he knows I would. So, he, yeah, oh, Sydney, your husband, your husband's missing out. <laughs> That's awesome, Adina. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yeah, my wife, exactly, exactly. I like to say their wife made it. All right, so see, my this is poking past the seam of my yoke, right? See, Elena, I, I feel like I actually think of you when I sometimes think about boundaries. I'm like, Elena would say no to this. <laughs> Thank you for being strength, Elena, that I can refer to. <laughs> All right, so here's the seam. My facing is poking just past, and we're gonna just pull the seam apart and we're gonna stitch in the ditch a little bit. I'm gonna sew right over my uh, pin. I'm trying to find the edge of my facing. It's like out here. You don't need to do the whole thing. You just need to catch your facing a little bit. So make sure your thread matches really good. Just like that. If you do it a little higher, it'll be under the um, collar when it turns back. And so there we go, we caught it, see, just a little bit. So Michelle, that's what I was talking about. It sounds like this is what you did. And I will do this other side. So if you don't have, oh, this one's kind of lumpy. See all this lumpiness, that's not, that's not okay. We don't want lumpiness right there. Um, if you have a shoulder seam, not a yoke seam, so it's not clean finish and you just have like a seam allowance there, you can pick this seam allowance up and just sew these two together on the inside of your garment. You don't have to do this from the, the right side with the stitch in the ditch. And that sometimes feels less risky. You can position it a little better. You know, you have more opportunity. Is that better? Yeah, that feels better. Okay, good. All right, so where's my facing right here? It's a little hard to pull back the seam when you've top stitched it. <laughs> It's not really an ideal seam for stitch in the ditch, I admit. It's true, me, me too, Elena, now, like when I moved here, I can tell when I moved here, I was under a lot of stress that I did not realize. And, um, and I was hurt too, I was kind of hurt that like, like all my friends just kind of like, oh, bye, <laughs> you know? And I, I had always been that person that would say yes to everything, not in the let me burn myself out way, but in the helpful kind of way. Like, you know, oh, you need a meal? Well, yeah, oh, we'll figure that out, right? If I couldn't, I couldn't. But I would volunteer at schools. I was on boards. I just tried to help out and just try and be a person, a voice of reason, you know, learn how to do things. As I'd, be, I'd be like, I don't know how to do this, but I'll help you if you want. And um, when I came here, I just felt so like, well, here, the, the vibe was different. And I just was like, you know what? I'm not saying yes to this. I have put in my time. I do not have to be this. I can take care of my kid, her responsibilities, volunteer for cer certain things, and, and that's as far as I'm going. And it felt empowering. 
Right, exactly, Danny. And that isn't helpful, right? Oh, you should open an Etsy store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, now we are at the part of doing the side seams and the sleeves and hems, and that's all we have left. So we're going to do, um, sorry, let me flip this around. I'm gonna set the sleeves in, but I'm also gonna do French seams um, on the side seams first. So we're gonna put this wrong sides together. I have five eighths of an inch total seam allowance. And we're gonna sew this, I'm gonna sew it with a quarter inch. That's what I like to start with. Now here's our vent down here, right? And so let's, let's do some like drawing here. Do I have something I want to draw with? Oh, maybe this, this will, this is, ooh, this is the blue. It washed out, right? We saw that it washed out, right? <laughs> squeaky chair. I stole this chair from the building. I swear it's been here since the building was born, but it's more comfortable. All right. So we have our, this is our full seam, right? It's our full seam. And we're going to take that out and we have this little angle here. So we kind of just want to know where this needs to end and the, where, like where the seam needs to end for the vent. And when I figure that out, you know, usually, you know, your vent's going to, I mean, she's giving you extra seam allowance here. So you might not have this little wing. And if you don't, this is going to work just fine. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to go a little past this little uh, ending point here about my seam allowance amount, right? So something like that. So this is the end of the seam and this is the beginning of the vent. We're gonna go down to here. Can I stop here? I would like my vent to be longer, to be honest. I'm like, hmm, if I stop there, I need a little bit to turn back though. Let's go like right here. I'm gonna go right there. We'll see. Um, let me see, Eliza, for this one, you don't have to have this wing to do a vent. Like the one on my shirt right now, I don't. But this one here, <clears throat> she extended it a half inch past the seam. <laughs> really, Adina? How do strangers find you on Facebook? Oh, that's true, Eliza. I get that. You put a notch. The product listing says it's a dry clean only, but you mean it does? Yeah, I wash everything. Are you sure? Really? <laughs> We're all like, what? <laughs> I'm using it in this shirt right now. <laughs> I don't know the style number. But it's the fusible in the three inch rolls. I've never had a problem. Okay, so right here, this is the little trick that they, they do. They're going to curve the seam. We're gonna go to the final edge. All right, so in other words, Usually with your French seam, sorry, I don't have contrast thread. Here's my seam, it goes like this. It's gonna come down and we're gonna curve over to the full seam line. So usually when you do a French seam, you don't, right? You stop, you would go straight down and stop right here, but we're going all the way to the finished seam. Okay, and now um, and the next step, we would clip to there. Clip right to that point that we finished at. See this? All right, now I'm gonna trim my seam down just a little bit. We're gonna do the whole thing on this one side. I won't make you wait to do both at the same time. So I'm gonna trim my seam down. 
you may not have to trim. I definitely do. I can tell there's like a little bit of a uneven edge, maybe my cutting. Um, there's a little bit of fraying because it's been, you know, handled a little bit. <clears throat> so we're just making that nice and clean and a little bit wavy. <laughs> now we're going to iron. Yeah, Adina, you should mark down the time and just write a comment under the stream for, with a, the time and then you'll be able to find it. It'll, it'll take you directly to it. It, link, it hyperlinks it when you write time. And you have to write it as in like two digits, colon, two digits. So if it's 58 minutes and 12 seconds in, you write 58 colon one, two. There's someone that routinely does this, and I think it's so cute. <laughs> and it's like notes to themselves. You can tell they're talking to themselves, and I love it. <laughs> they're like, this is where she does this. <laughs> this is where she does this. <laughs> It'll be like three timestamps in one comment. Okay, so this will probably make it a little easier. Ooh, this is getting kind of unwieldy. Ugh. Oh, um... It might not, you might have to like scroll your mouse to the very beginning. I can't see the time either. I'm looking in control room. Tap the video to see Tattooed Mama says. Where's that wonderful time person when we need them? Well, um, they usually do the timestamps after the stream is done anyway. I'm not sure you can comment yet either. Okay, so look, this is what it's looking like right now. You see that? So look at how this curved over to that finished edge and we clipped down. Oh, very cool, Francis. Yeah, the way I, I've done this um, is a little different. So I'm actually excited to try it this way. This is so simple and clean. All right, now when I come down, I'm just gonna go to that point like that. And now you have this um, little angle here. Time has a negative before it. All right, so we press this open and we're gonna turn this down like this, like this, and we're gonna get, so maybe I could have, like I don't think I got this quite right in the position, but my also my vent is a little asymmetrical. But, so you know how usually when I do a French seam to a vent, I have, you can see my clip. This one, you're going to turn down this edge here and then turn down this edge here and you're gonna get like a house, right? And turn down this edge here. My edge is, this top edge doesn't quite look how it, it's supposed to, so I'm folding it to make it look like it. And see, so now, if I mirrored this side to this one, we're gonna go up and, and then add an angle, like a little house. So let's go to the iron and then let's see how we really want this angled because this is how, I'll show you how I want my angle. We want it to be more like, this right so let's go iron oh they said not to but i'm not going to do that <laughs> i don't see the point in that i mean yeah you don't have to they say to leave tails and then hand weave them in but um come on barbara this isn't your first day here <laughs> Would you be in my stream if I did that? <laughs> so we're gonna turn down the top there. The way the this vent was made was didn't really give you enough to turn back because this hem is slightly curved and they didn't give you a bit here to meet that, unfortunately. That's not something you did wrong. So we're just turning this like this. 
I want it to be symmetrical. I hope you can see okay. All right, this one looks higher. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna maybe laying this on there. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mimic it by doing that. That, and then we'll fold this one like this. I think I can undo that a little bit. There we go. I think that'll make it more symmetrical. And now we're gonna open it up like this. Is this the back? Okay, cool. All right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, wait. oh yeah, glue sticks would be a good idea. Oh yeah, do the um, tiny stitches in the curve. Yeah, 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 like a shorter stitch length. There we go. This is how it's looking. So I'm not gonna sew this yet because I'm gonna do my hem and my vent all at the same step so I get a nice continuous stitch because that is where I get nerdy. I love that kind of look. So that when I go around the whole perimeter, it's gonna be one continuous stitch going up and down and around. All right, so let's do our other side because we, we are pros at this now and I'll try and remember to tell you the things they told you to do in the steps. Uh-oh. <laughs> now Terry gets points for saying we can see fine. I knew she'd be the one to say it too. <laughs> gloves, this woman in her gloves. All right, so I did, uh, let's see how long I made this one. So I'm gonna lay this on here and find right where I did this. So right here along this curve, they don't have you back stitch, they have you leave long tails and they have you do a shorter stitch length right there. I'm not, I really don't think that that's that key to be honest. All right, now we're gonna clip to that stitch line right there. We're gonna trim our edge. I like this better than my method actually. Someone linked this in the guild. Terry, I think you linked this a year ago and then someone linked the exact same one recently because I searched for it. Ooh. Okay. I don't know why this feels different this time. Okay, we're gonna just press this. husband's um, becoming a lot more relaxed about some of the things he wears like this is a good example like picking this novelty print but y'all have to tell you about this one shirt he wears occasionally that when he got it I was like oh boy so my we got a tractor a couple of years ago because we have five acres and it's been invaluable and um, we really hemmed and hawed on it um, and we got it and gosh, I don't know how we would have gotten this far without it now, but, uh, I have used a tractor a lot when I worked on a farm. This is Michael's thing. Like he, this is, he's been learning how to use a tractor for the first time. Right. And he's getting really good at it. Um, but my mom got him a shirt <laughs> and it has a picture of a little tractor on it. And it says, this is how I roll. <laughs> I was like, Oh boy. Y'all, I went to fashion school. <laughs> you know, like, I know I'm not very fashionable, but I thought Michael was going to be like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, lately, I see him wearing it, and it's 
it's really cute. He and my mom have gotten close and I love it. All right, oh, we need to sew this. Yeah, definitely, Terry. The third time you've seen it linked in the guild, that's funny. We all knew my method was okay. <laughs> all right. So this one, you just come kind of straight down. You need to enclose that little raw edge. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to clip it a little bit more right here. The seam allowance. I need to trim that down more because we're going to sew our last seam to that point. So we need to clip this so that we can actually enclose the raw edge there. So there we go. That'll be probably enough. The other one I had clipped more. All right, so we got this, we got this. There we go. I thought I just ran out of bobbin. It sounded kind of fishy. Kind of fishy. <clears throat> I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. The reason I'm having to do that is because they built in this extension. So. Okay. Press this lower portion here. Turn this under and under. And then I'm gonna lay this one on here and just mimic it. Get it symmetrical. Hot, hot, hot. That wool under my ironing board really works. It really holds the heat and steam for better or worse. <laughs> Oh, Kalidokali. Okay, so let's make sure our plackets match while we're over here because we have a nice big flat surface here. So where's my other one? Here we go. So let's lay this one down. And this one right here. Let's make sure they're the same length. without distorting it. Well, I think the other side's a, a tad longer, so we're gonna flip it so we can see the shorter side on top. Let's make sure my shirt's not pulling in any way because we're about to hem um, soon, so we want to make sure that we get these the same. They actually look the same now that I flipped it over. Let's get rid of this interfacing. Oh, I just found, these are the scissors, remember I found in my embroidery box? Oh, they're old, look at that. <laughs> I have a bin of scissors sitting here because um, me and Rayanne would go through them so much. So they're all not that great. I, I, I'm trying to go to figure out which ones are keepable. That was very helpful to know. I just need to get rid of that one. Is this um, lining up here? Look at that. That looks pretty good. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. I just think this edge right here looks a little like it's dipping below the center here, you know? So I'm gonna do this. 
we can even see it. Let's line this front edge up and we'll pull it down. And this is likely because the seam sometimes tightens up the fabric and draws it up. You can kind of see the dips right there. So let's just get rid of that dip, dippity do. That's gonna give a much nicer hem, you know? Sorry, I forgot to turn the computer for the chat. Hopefully there's nothing big happening. <laughs> that looks the same. I want to trim it. So now let's compare it on the mat and see where we're at here. It's actually better than the other side was. I'm just going to trim this little facing right here. All right, now we could hem this right now. Um, oh, I know the guild is not a secret society. <laughs> but look like a wind sock that fit me. <laughs> yeah, Mafia, they're old. They're, they're really old. It had that like plastic stuff on the scissors for grip. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the computer's great. It's the best non-secret society. <laughs> It's such a great, like yesterday you guys were going off on that like live, little live chat thing. And I was just like, these people are so nice. I just love, I'm really just so happy about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hem my shirt because we're, we're working on this little vent thing here just to kind of complete the vent all in one thing. Um, and then I'm going to set the sleeves on and then we'll be done because I've already hemmed it, right? So th this is the little thing I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, with the hem though, I'm going to fold the facing back right sides together. I'm going to sew this. We'll just do an inch. And I'm doing an inch because I know this isn't going to be too short for my husband. All right, so we're sewing that like that, right? And now what you can do is you can trim your facing to there, right? And then you can trim your shirt as well, but I wouldn't go that far. You can even just do the corner of your shirt like this. So it looks like that. So the facing is trimmed all the way to the center front, but the shirt's still hanging out. You don't really want to trim that to the edge because we're going to catch it under the facing. So we're also going to trim this corner here. And remember how I said something about this, the back stitch at the end? We need to put this back in. So we just lopped it off. So we're gonna just sew a little corner here, like that, like this. And then when we turn this like this, it's gonna tuck your hem under that facing like that, really nice and clean, all right? So that's why we're doing that. So now it's to the other side. And then we're going to be able to sew the whole hem. So this time we'll incorporate that back stitch thing at the same time. Because I know I need it. So, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm lining it up on the inch line of my machine. That's why I don't really need the ruler. I have an inch line. I come here at the seam and I'm going to turn. And this way I've reinforced that little corner since we lopped. We're going to, right now we're about to lop off the corner. And then I just trim the facing down because we don't need it. This this right here should be done in most home sewing patterns. I don't know why. I don't know about this one might be do it this way. I, I don't know, but I don't see this done enough. All right, so turn your corners. Uh, 
Um, let me see how they're in here. I would double check that your center fronts match. Let's go press it really quick. Okay. Make sure your facing's still laying nice and flat, right? And you get that seam right there at the bottom. And we'll turn this up. And while we're sitting here too, we can make sure that we turn this up so that our vent matches perfectly. Maybe you're doing a camp shirt that where the back is longer, so you don't want it to line up there. But this one's interesting because it has a very gentle curve to the hem, whereas normally it would be very straight. So it is a little trickier because we gotta kinda, kinda work it in there. Curve's nice though. I think it adds us a, a little bit of, um, it softens it, you know? out these pins. We don't really need them. We've ironed it a lot. So I think when you have a vent, it's kind of nice that you have a very straight seam to it so that you, when you're leading up to it, you have this right angle here. But this curve is subtle enough that you can work it out. So like I said, make sure that is flat. There we go. Now, the last thing we could do, we could sew this uh, right sides together as well, like this, and turn the corner there. We're doing nice tricksy finishes. I had this whole roll binding fall, I didn't even notice. Yeah, exactly, Terry. I agree. It just finishes nicer. All right, so I'm going to finish this little corner here, right? Because I don't really want to sew this like this. We're going to get this a little cleaner. So we're going to put this, we're going to unfold the vent and put this right sides together. And we're going to line up the, the hem fold right on top of itself and fold it back right on that vent fold too. It's not going to want it because we've, we've ironed it. I mean, I ironed it really good. Yeah, I totally agree with Aisha, Adina. The, um, posts on computer are better. Like this. And we can, um, cut, cut this off same like we did on the facing, right? Just to reduce the bulk. And so now our little vent is looking really cute. Look at that little guy. Oh, I should have, did I trim that too much? Maybe I did. I think I trimmed this way too much. Don't trim this one. <laughs> we just learned. It's already like winging away a little bit. So, okay. So fold this again, right, right along the hem. We're just sewing it right at the fold of the hem. All right, we're just gonna trim the vent this time. So when we turn this right side out like this, it tucks in there nicely, okay? I know, it's cute, isn't it, Julie? You get notifications on the iPad, but I can't always figure out where to look to be. Okay, so it's the bell. So Adina, the, the um, I know you probably don't have the time but I, I really highly recommend you look at the navigating the guild thing on the left. So when you open up the guild, go all the way to the left and under guild feed and chat, there's like four things. And one of them is navigating. That has all these little tiny um, tutorials. They're really quick videos so that it would be easier for people. And that has so much in there. That's what I recommend. Yeah, the chat is a little overwhelming sometimes. I open it and I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> I 
they've been busy today. <laughs> Same, Elena. <laughs> I think it's like the same like group of people often too. <laughs> All right, so we'll just trim down the vent a little bit. We can trim a little bit of the corner like that, as long as we don't go past the width of the vent. There we go. All right, now we're ready to stitch, and it's just gonna be like a seamless stitch fest, except I didn't turn under the edge, but that's okay. We'll just do that as we go. Let's turn out all our corners, make them nice. That used to give us notifications for that chat and now it doesn't so I forget it and it'll be like 99. I'm like, I just wanna cry. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I wanna see all of it. How? <laughs> Okay, we're gonna start at the center front. You could have overlocked this edge, by the way. I'm gonna turn it under. We're gonna turn it under a little bit. And I'm gonna sew through the facing onto the hem there, and that anchors the facing down. And now we're just gonna go all the way across the bottom. So we just did a lot of prep, right? So this should be pretty straightforward. I could have even ironed this under. Now we're approaching this vent. Am I running out of bobbin thread? And now we're gonna turn up. One more stitch, yeah. Go toward the seam. We're gonna pivot at the seam. And now I'm just gonna reorient here and turn under this very thready edge. Let's trim a little bit of those threads here. Trim that, turn that under a little bit like that. What's this thread here? Sorry, just a second. Let me get this thread here. Here we go. Now turn that edge under. Okay, now we're back on track. Turn the whole shirt so you get a nice right angle. feels very nautical to me. Especially this little symbol here. So I, I will say the way I usually do French seam vents, it doesn't go to a point right here. This makes me a little nervous. This is a, very much a stress point. I usually have the um, this above where the seam has ended. I just did this on something. Was it on this? Yeah, I just did this on my eyelid shirt. Cause this is a very much a place where your shirt will rip and stuff. So that's probably the, dra the drawback to this method. <laughs> Get rid of these little threads I should have gotten rid of. I was focused on other things. What time is it? One o'clock? How long have we been going for? Two hours? The shirt goes together pretty quickly. If I didn't have to stop and chat with you guys but then I wouldn't be making this shirt. <laughs> Here's my one that came a little shy of that vent because I trimmed it too much. I'm not being very consistent with my hem allowance, I, I know. 
I'm just gonna try and catch that in there best we can. It's not looking great. I can barely get it in there. I want that in there too. I want it all. I'm just gonna backstitch right there. There we go. Not too bad. Sometimes I just feel like every length of a seam is not is not uh, playing nice with the length of my stitch, and I'm always like just more than one stitch away, and I don't, you know, I need a half stitch to get to the end or something. If anything, you're learning that you probably should have ironed that other uh, edge, this edge down first, huh? <laughs> I'd be done by now. <laughs> All right, we're at the beginning. So let's turn this under. And when we approach the beginning, we're gonna make sure everything's nice and flat. Right, we're gonna make sure this placket, we're gonna kind of straighten it out for a, for a distance. We need this to be nice and flat like this. You can even, you know, put a little pin here to make sure that when, now when you're moving it, it doesn't. And so peel this back, turn under this edge. This is equally fun when you have the kind of front facing situation where you get to go up and around and you just have this one line of stitches going all the way around your garment. It's just so good, you know. All right, so we're just gonna tack our facing a little bit. And there we go. Now we have this, I love that, one continuous stitch going all the way around. Those little things, you know, you notice them. All right, now we're gonna do the sleeves. And we're fringe seaming these puppies too. Yeah, I, I don't get any notifications for that chat on my phone anymore. We used to, we don't anymore. <clears throat> but you can turn on notifications on the desktop. And I have those muted because, yeah, it is, it's kind of noisy. Plus like right now I have the, I think, oh, I don't have the guild open. If I have the guild open during the stream, you'd hear all of that. And then I would be able to tell you weren't really paying attention to the stream. I'd be like, look at them posting in the guild. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> if anything, I'm flattered. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're even in the guild. It's awesome. We're almost to our 900th member. Isn't that crazy? I think if it would be different if it wasn't free. All right. Wrong sides together and now right sides together. I cannot remember if this shirt sleeve has ease in it. I feel like I ask that every time. I just can't remember all the different sleeves, you know? I picked out buttons already because I was, I was thinking about them for his other shirt. 
And I have navy blue buttons, they're kind of cute, but I only have five. I think five is not enough for this shirt. There's a bit of each, oh, thank you. <laughs> what did D say could? Oh, the method you've used to fringe seam above the vent could be used when putting in an invisible zipper. Ooh. Um. That's interesting. I think you you could. I think you're right. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um. So yeah, if we looked at it upside down, so then your zipper is up here. Yeah, I think you could. It doesn't solve the fact that your edge is raw along the zipper still. But you know, it's very underrated that a straight stitch finishes a seam. So you could put a straight a line of stitches along the raw edge of your zipper opening with like a short stitch length and then put in your zipper using your seam allowance and that would help. And once you pull off a lot of little threads, it would, it would stop threading, you know? Very cool, I love that idea, D. Yeah, so it would be like this with the zipper coming down to here. Not all this hoo-ha, I know, you'd have your zipper in there. I, I think that would work. I think you'd honestly, it'd be like up here and you'd have a little bit of your seam before. Yeah, you have to try it and you have to let us know. <laughs> All right, let me finish this seam here. All right, we'll put an easing stitch in just in case we need one. I hope we don't. Well, I'm not gonna change my stitch length. Uh, this has full seam allowance. Remember, I changed the seam allowance on this so that I could do this. Did I finally run out of bobbin thread? <laughs> yeah, this is the guilty. Oh no, I didn't. I'm so paranoid. Usually when I French seam something, I do go through a lot of thread. And this one really, it's only the side seam and um, sleeves that get French seamed. But we've done some top stitching a little bit, not much. All right, we'll pull it a little bit. I won't, watch me not need this. If it's not much ease, then we're, we don't really need this. If you want a dedicated video on how to French seam a set in sleeve, I have one on my channel. It's actually one of my most popular videos. Um, like, I, and I'm wearing the pants from the French seam inseam pocket video. And I think that's actually one of my most viewed or it's the how to serge elastic to a waistband. I can't remember. It's nuts. <laughs> Your IT skills. We just need a yay or nay, D, or what you found would work or not work. <laughs> Nothing techie. You don't have to do anything techie in the guild. All right, this is the front sleeve here. There we go. Front to front. I like to offset my seams here at the underarm when I'm French seaming. <laughs> I do that almost every time. There we go. <laughs> there we go. This time at least I caught it. <laughs> All right. Wrong sides together. Both wrong sides together. <laughs> There's no shoulder notch on this sleeve. 
That's kind of a bummer. That's what really what I need. I need to just put one on this pattern. I make it so often. But yeah, there was a little ease. Look at that. I feel like that's fairly distributed front to back. So we'll say that that's the middle point. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> exactly. Well, if I don't pay attention to chat, do you, it, it won't help me if you guys yell at me. I, I watch a couple of streamers who have um, audio alerts on. So if someone can, you know, type a message in chat that plays um, audio. Like it'll say, oh, great to see how you're doing, man. You know, something like that. And it'll say that out loud, like in a robotic voice, you know, it's not their voice. I, I've been in a stream where they, you, they did allow that. I think, oh no, I can't remember. I think it was just the, the like the AI voice. So then you could yell at me, stop or troll in the chat. All right. So you see how I have this um, right here is nice and smooth where my easing stitch is, but you can see this edge is ruffled and that's okay. We are going to mash that down. We're going to sew these little ruffles down. Try and keep them perpendicular to the raw edge when you're doing the French seam. Don't let them, in other words, don't let them flop over like this towards you because what will happen is this little edge sometimes will flop so far over that you'll have, uh, you won't catch it. So, oh, ah, that's awesome, Dee. Well, welcome. Thanks for chatting in chat. That's what makes it great is when people chat. Need a little bit. I make mistakes too, you'll see. Sometimes it does get the bust of me. There's a lot of ease in this, this sleeve, Aisha. <laughs> Pink Aisha. <laughs> she, she said, oh yeah, there's, there's ease in it. There's a lot. I'm kind of surprised. I'm barely getting it all in there and I'm kind of cutting the, the limit of how low it should be in the sleeve. my easing stitch out of there. Okay. All right, let's do our other one so that we can trim them at the same time and iron them at the same time. <laughs> yeah, all you remember was there is ease. Yeah, there was definitely. I'm so glad you said that because I probably would not have put the easing stitch in. I would have been like, it's a camp shirt, you know. It's a drop shoulder. There's no ease. Oh my gosh, I almost did it again, you guys. Okay. So we have the sleeve. I press the seam toward the front and the side seam toward the back. Did I not draw this one up yet? Oh, I didn't. Oh, I did a little bit. Okay. Just pulling a little more ease in there because now I know I needed a little more last time on the other sleeve. Can always let it out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oh, 
Oh, I still have a lot. Oh my God, that's a lot of ease. Let's see. Is it accurate? That's so much ease. What the heck? Put those little tucks perpendicular. I, I, I need to make a note to myself and look at this, Lee, because that's just too much. If it's a drop shoulder, it should be a flatter cap without the ease. You don't really want it to do that little, like, bump, you know, low down on your arm. All right, we're going to trim this edge now. Just a little bit, clean it up a little bit. Iron and then sew. Especially for a men's shirt. I, yeah, I agree. You don't think you could ever sew it? Of course you could. I totally believe you could. How would I take the ease out of the pattern? Um, <laughs> sorry. I would uh, slash and overlap. Cap to him. You could, like, I say leave, like, an inch. If there's a lot of ease in it, maybe leave, like, three quarters or an inch if you don't, if you feel uncomfortable taking out a ton of fabric. Because that's, that's easable without an easing stitch. If you get into that inch and a half range, then you're kind of, like, having to put in a stitch and kind of draw it up. But three quarters in some fabrics, you can kind of get away without even doing the easing stitch. Maybe not quilting cotton. Quilting cotton is going to be a little bit more like, wah, you know. But, um, you know, if this were something a little looser weave. If it was like a polyester, though, you're going to probably want the easing stitch. I know a lot of men's clothes tend to be. Synthetics, it seems. They, they really like to market the anti-wrinkle, easy care, you know, stuff like that. And it ends up being synthetic. Okay. Now, we're just going to press this raw edge toward the sleeve. I think this is the hardest part. Not this step, but the next. Well, th this is the hardest part, this one right here. So pressing this seam, just one way, it doesn't matter what. Get something that you can set under here so you can kind of get into that cap, especially if you have a really peaked cap. This is gonna be a, a, a you know, men's shirt usually has a bigger armhole um, and it um, will be sometimes flatter. But a women's shirt, like a, a women's shirt that's a really close fitting, it's really hard to get in here sometimes. So just put something like a towel or um, a tailor's ham or something to kind of get it up and pull that sleeve. Oh, look, I didn't catch. Did I? Oh, no, I trimmed my seam allowance really. That's so weird. I trimmed my seam allowance like I, something happened right there. So I got to re-sew that. <laughs> Good to know. Good we saw it. All right, even though that's the first seam and it wouldn't make a difference as far as the final seam goes. All right, now do this one. If you have the nose of the ironing board, you might not need the ham too. I uh, am way over here on the right so the camera can see it. I do it on the shirt side just because it's easier. doesn't matter what side you do it on. All right, now the easier iron is to turn the shirt inside out and poke the sleeve inside the armhole like this. And now 
get that edge right on the edge. We don't need this. You might, I don't know. Get that seam right on the edge like that. And now we're gonna press it again. Don't skip this. <laughs> this is really what makes it easy. So, and you can see, look at, I put this in the curved shape. That's, this is the side seam. So this is the arm, bottom of the armhole. Keep that curved shape, don't distort it. And just walk your armhole around. Don't worry about all those tucks in the fabric. It's gonna be totally fine. Promise. Pinky swear. I've put more ease in a shirt than this on harder fabrics and I didn't get any tucks. Smooth them out if you need to a little bit, but you know, mostly the tucks are already in the first pass. But in the last pass, it's too far away from the seam to get caught. This is the, yeah, for me, this is the part I don't like, the tedious part, because you get to, you iron like two inches and you have to rearrange two inches. It's just not much. Here's the bottom of the armhole again. Hey, have any of you guys been to, gosh, what's it called? I think it's called the Sewing and Stitches Expo. It's in Wa Washington State. Have any of you been there? I was thinking about applying to be a teacher there, but I literally have no clue what to teach, what to expect, <laughs> you know? I've never done that kind of thing. Here's that little spot I need to re-sew right here. Like what would people want? I don't know. That's a drivable show for me, barely. I could have a booth even. I had no idea what I would do in that booth. <laughs> I don't really have anything to sell. We've we've all walked at a show, you know, like even the one at the fair, like when you go to the county fair and there's those awkward booths where they're playing like a TV. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> oh God, that would be so embarrassing I could be I could bring a machine and so live with a microphone you'd be walking by my booth and you'd hear me talking oh god that is so cringy for me oh. now I know how those booths happen I am that weirdo when did that happen home stretch this is the last little bit Okay, let me re-sew that little spot before I forget. Well, that's, maybe that's a good idea, Shim. Oh, really, Shim? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so, Ray. I think that's where it's at. Yeah, we could do a meetup. <laughs> See, there's that little spot. Either I didn't catch it or it got trimmed too close. And this looks like it got trimmed too close. I don't know. Let's fix it. <laughs> All right. I think I fixed that little spot right there. Now we're just gonna sew that seam. We've already pressed it. It's all ready to go. You've already done all the hard work. If you get a tuck, you just, you first of all, scratch it <laughs> with your fingernail before you take it, take out your stitching. Most of the time, if the tuck happens between where the needle went in and out of the fabric, like in between the stitch, you can just smooth it out. Oh, I love it. Okay. You guys are giving me some courage.
I thought it would be a fun way to meet other people who are in this industry. I really don't know the home sewing world. I have to say there's been a lot of aspects of it that I haven't really enjoyed. So it'd be nice to meet some nice people, you know, feel differently. Is it, Barbara? How come? I could have a booth for the guild. That's true. That'd be interesting. Sign up today and get a free saucepan. I don't know. Oh, really? Really, Aisha? That's cool. You guys are all amazing. You won't come to hearts, but you'll come to the sewing and gift deck. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the booth thing and the teacher thing, I think I have to, I have until September to decide. So there, I can see that. That could be a tuck right there, but it's not, I'm not letting it happen. I'll just slide this along a little bit. I, it's, I swear it sounds like I'm out of thread. Maybe it's just sewing on quilting cotton today. It just sounds a little different. I don't know. Oh, I didn't really get that lined up very good right there. I had to go a little wider at the last second. Okay. So now we do the satisfying thing of remove. Oh, did I? Oh, I pulled the other side. I, I had it down pat for a while, which side to pull of my thread, like bobbin or top. It's not really bobbin or top. It's from right side or wrong side. And it's, it's, I should pull it always from the wrong side of the fabric. That way I leave the tail here and I can pull it out. Pull it from the wrong side. Oh, look, here's the tail. Yay. I love removing. <laughs> um, there's a, a show called like, it's like the sewing and stitching expo in Washington every year. It's like in, it's like in January or February. But I was just wondering if any other people have gone or been or, I don't know. I thought it would be kind of fun. Maybe I could do it. Maybe I could teach something. What could I teach in person? Ooh, look at that. So good, I pulled it all out. Okay, and let's let's pull the bobbin thread on it here. There it is, right there. That kind of relaxes your the easing stitches when you get can get rid of that thread. Oh, this one. Oh no, that's not it. Shoot. Let's see if one's poking out on this side. Oh, it is! everything. <laughs> so I think that the things that are valued are more in the fitting realm. And I don't really focus on fitting like other people do. And, and not for any reason. I just, I just haven't. I, I like sewing. I think sewing is great for a live stream too. Oh man, I can't really grab this one. <laughs> Dang it. I really want it. <laughs> I really want it. I must have stitched through this thread. I also do a lot of sewing on an industrial machine, so I don't feel like that's approachable in some ways for bringing to a show, you know? I really want that thread. But I stitched through one stitch of it and I can't pull it anymore. Oh well. We'll try and get as much as we can. Really? So this is more popular than I realize. I used to go to a sew show there, but I would go to a knitting show and I vended there and it was a good show for me. Oh, okay. How do you guys know about this show? Like their Instagram account isn't that big. All right, we just have the sleeve hems. Oh, and look, see there's, 
no tucks. See that? No tucks. You can see the ease in there. No tucks though. Exactly, Ray. It is the icing on the cake. <laughs> All right, so um, should we iron this first? I think the sleeve hem is like this wide on this shirt. So let's go iron it. Yes, she goes to that show, Mafio. I'm chatting with her about it. I just don't want to assume anything about what her plans are. And she's also more recognized there. Like she's going to probably um, definitely get accepted as a teacher. There's a very good chance I won't even get accepted as a teacher. I am a nobody to them. doesn't even matter my skills I don't think in this home sewing world this is one thing that's been so aggravating it's like oh okay it doesn't matter if I'm skilled or not <laughs> lovely <laughs> what's the point <laughs> so you know there are plenty of people doing better than me that don't have that going for them so I need to get savvy in a different way all right where is the did I just do those at two totally different sleeve hem lengths Kinda, not, no, not really. It's actually pretty close. This one felt a little bigger than I thought uh, maybe, and I was right. Yeah, I don't even really have like a product. I mean, you know what I mean? So I thought the, I actually talked about the booth with her because I was thinking, you know, like I know she is has something in the works that she's been talking about on her channel. And so I was thinking, oh, if you get a booth, I will help man your booth. That's what I said, you know, because I'm a champ at that. But the booth is not cheap for not having a product to sell. I, you know what I mean? So... I never iron this. I'm not going to iron it now. I just wing it. I'm still here. Um, really, because I was thinking like that would be a good, it would be a, just another place to meet people and to tell people what I do. I don't know. Make some money. I don't think though that it's a money making thing. I think that it would be um, break even if I was lucky. So. There, I should have at least trimmed this edge even if I'm not gonna like iron it, you know? There's a lot of threads on this edge. Quilting cotton can be kind of thready. You hit energy. YouTube is my product. Yeah, basically. I mean, I need something more than that. Like the guild is right now kind of my thing because that's what keeps me. The guild makes it possible for me to do live streams. Ooh. You'll host a party. Wait, what did you say? Actually, it sounds like very good. Share the booth and see if the guild members would cover. You're half of the booth ahead of them. We could all just chill. <laughs> you just want to pay for a lounge. <laughs> the guild lounge. <laughs> Cute. I like Shim's idea. Maybe that would help ease me into it. Just go and visit. That's like a 12 hour drive for me. Wait, where, where's Piala, uh, Sydney? In relation to Tacoma, is it north, south, or east of it? Tacoma is about, a tw it's about, oh, I think it's a 12 hour drive for me, or 14, 12 or 14. I usually go, go to Portland, stay the night, and then do the last few hours. We done. We're done. 
Let's check it out. Look at the inside, so cute. <laughs> Just north, okay. So yeah, that's still the same drive for me. Let's, um, got a whole lot of zoom going on here. Southeast of Tacoma, Shem's all, it's just north. Yeah, I didn't ask you, Shem. <laughs> Wait, they sort of run together, okay. He's gonna look so cute in this. Love it. Oh, Tacoma is just north. Oh, sorry, Shem. Okay, so Tacoma, oh, so it's it's south of, um, Puyallup is south, oh, cool, so it's shorter. <laughs> I don't know, Aisha, it's in like February, I think. Thanks, Francis. This looks so cute, like it frames it really nicely. I actually do think I put the collar in upside down, but you can't tell. Oops, I just buttoned it the wrong way. <laughs> it's gonna button like this. Okay, so I picked out. <sighs> I just don't think I have enough buttons. It's a long shirt, you know? I only have five buttons. Yeah, so you can see the buses. Oh, okay, Sydney. Oh, thanks, Mafio. February, so the end of February, you're putting on your calendar. Oh, you guys, um, maybe I should have mentioned it. Now I'm scared. You're making me really nervous. <laughs> I actually loved doing shows, I will admit. And I, I still have my booth, you guys. I never found someone to buy it. I didn't sell it that hard. And I really don't want it. But I have a nice, simple booth that I like I put together, um, it would totally work as a booth, you know? Yeah, that's the shirt I made him. So uh, that's why I told Jen, I was like, if you need a booth, like I can drive it up and you could use a booth for something. Um, Cause it's pegboard, they're accordion pegboard pa panels and every peg hook you can imagine. Okay, so if I put one there, see, I like the navy blue. I think, is that too strong? Oh, I don't have enough, you guys. Don't get your heart set on these. Don't look, don't look. I have these, I feel like these might be a little big. But they're so white, they're kind of got a blue cast to them and I have enough of these. They might just have to be these. Oh, that's a cute little emoji, D. I should, yeah, I should say everything must go. <laughs> Booth for sale. My friend wanted it, but then she just never, she never bought it. And so I was like, okay, I really have any clear. <sighs> I do, but I don't think I have enough for the whole front. You know, Adina, like I don't, I think it's like, I have a lot of clear buttons, but they're not all of the same size. I used to, I, but I used them on something. Yeah, clear is actually really handy. Yeah, I think that these are, I think that these are gonna be it. Um, I have my shirt box, like I have a button shirt box, shirt, shirt button box, you know? Oh, this right here, don't steal those. This is, I mean, like, yeah, I didn't, I'm no genius. Here, let me show you what I got, you guys. I have two boxes of buttons. This is my button. <laughs> so I have this, so I always have this as a backup, right? 
we have some navy blue buttons in here, right? Um, and there's some white, it's like a warmer white and it works like this warmer white works really nice with this fabric. But I'm also always, oh, this gray, actually this gray is really nice. Actually the gray looks, shoot. I have this light gray and I have this dark gray. The dark gray is a little shiny. Some of these are kind of shiny. My husband's kind of like, they're kind of shiny, you know, kind of like reflective. Sorry, you can't see it. Gosh darn thing. Let me um, zoom in. A, a little bit. All right, so my only issue with using the buttons from this box is they're small. <laughs> oh, see you, Julie. Nice seeing you. Sleep well. That's your bedtime, huh? I think if I read those who can go with, you should go to check it out. Not for you to do a booth. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't used the pink ones yet. They're a nice color pink. I have used uh, a lot of these and these and the navy, I think. I think I've used a lot, a, a little bit of all these. These are dark green, that's pretty. Okay, so and here's my button box. I think that this is an embroidery floss thingy. So this is where I got these and I put them like this. So um, who said they want it? Yeah, so I think it was D that said, you want to steal it the way I do this. So if you don't, safety pins don't always work, just so you know, because the, the distance between the two sides of the safety pin isn't wide enough sometimes. So I use this cotton cord as well. This right here, yeah. Th I feel like this is very affordable. It has the little tiny ones, so you can do the, the sleeve placket button and your uh, button down buttons on the collar. So yeah, it is interesting the colors they give you, isn't it? But you might in juvenile stuff, if you have kids things or um, I don't know. You get two of this color, two of this color and two of this color. So these middle three, you get two containers of, just so you know. This is the gray, right? I like this light gray. Cause this blue little camper van, it's more like a, a Dutch blue, you know? I went through all these. Oh, this, this is a possibility, but it's kind of big. I'm finding that I put big buttons on things. That's very home sewish, sewy to do. <laughs> these are kind of big. Oh yeah, the flamingo shirt with that would be perfect. Oh, I also, uh, I always recommend getting a gross of something like this too. Just tortoise shell buttons. These go with everything. I like big buttons and I cannot lie. They're easier to do deal with. These are the ones that I just took off of his hemp shirt that I made for him when I was 26 years old or 27 years old. These were what he picked out on that butter yellow hemp shirt. Aren't these cool? Okay, I have these as well. Um, these are nice. I was gonna put this on my, um, there's not enough, there's five. Stop looking at those. Okay, oh, and these are too big, I think. These are kind of too big. Eh, they look a little old fashioned. Some of these handmade buttons like these I got, I think from, um, uh, what's her name? Um, begins with the T, Tabitha Sower. I got these from her, but they're really thick. Like, I don't think I realized how thick these things are till recently. Cause my husband really liked some, but they were, he was like, those are too thick. And I've got some from Pigeon Wishes, which are a little, um, thinner. Yeah, right, Adina, exactly, so handy. <laughs> A 
What about dust? Knit binding produces a lot of dust. Yes, it does. Oh, you're just talking in general. That's right. You have your cover stitch out. Okay. Okay. I think I'm leaning toward these. I know they're kind of big. light gray I think see there's the two sizes there might even be three sizes yeah there's three sizes Terry 14 16 and 18 line it tells you right here in the colors so you got to make sure you're, you get all the same size for your buttons when you um, pick them out otherwise you might have two different sizes going you don't even realize it you know I think that this, I like the light gray too. It's subtle. The dark gray could work. I just think it's a lot from a distance, you know? Yeah, let's do these. Let's do these. Oh, these need to go in my bin over there. Put these down here so I don't throw them away. My garbage can is too close to things. Let's pull out three, six, seven. I think we'll do it. Three, six, seven. Let's just give it a, um, a, a once over. Let me corral these guys. Okay, and I just kind of get an idea with this thing, like how many am I gonna need? How, hey Terry, do you have a set amount that you go below the, above the hem here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. I think that's what I want. You know, usually your button spacing is like not more than three inches. One, one thing I like about this, this box shim is that now I know if I reorder things, I know what I'm going to get, like what I use a lot. So, <laughs> right, Adina? I know. Sometimes there's too many chefs. <laughs> oh, and I'm also, oh, so in a camp collar, see, this is the defining thing, right? You can put the button all the way to the top, and some of them have a little loop. Ray, Ray told me that, and she's right. There's a little loop that goes right here, kind of like this, but much smaller, right here. And then the button goes under the collar like this. It goes up there, right? So he, he probably will never um, button it closed. So I just skip that top one and just do where the natural break happens. Six inches, so you do have a number. I love that you have a number. <laughs> Six inches, if not tucking the shirt, other than that, I follow the button guy for the button. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, you guys, well, this was fun. I might be live tomorrow and Saturday or one or the other because I usually stream on Saturdays. I just, I just knew this would only take me one stream to sew up and, um, Maybe we can, maybe I can finish my camp dress pattern tomorrow or today. Today, it's only two. Or maybe I'll finish it on camera tomorrow and then we can sew it on Saturday or something. So, yeah. You crocheted your first card, you sent a picture of my knitting pins to help me pick buttons. Yeah, that helps. I like going to the store. Like the yarn stores have the nicest buttons. They're expensive though, but they have some really nice buttons there. And they're really helpful. They've seen so many. They've seen so many like people's projects and they've seen like, I don't know. So yeah, I think so. I don't have anything for the guild tomorrow, right? <laughs> you know me, I live day by day. <laughs> I wake up and do what's on the, today's calendar. But tomorrow I don't have anything. So I can do maybe um, fix it Friday or sewing circle. And um, 
I have a bunch of, I also have a bunch of things that need to get fixed and sewn, like usual. Yeah, Terry, I think you just go in and see what it's all about, you know. It's near a place called Karate. There's a town called Karate. Really? I, love, I like that. You don't, Adina? There's more yarn stores and fabric stores in my region. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> well, thanks, you guys. And if you're sewing your, um, oh, and your karate lesson. Oh, right. Hi, Chantel. How's it going? Got it, Terry. Okay. <laughs> the town was called that. Uh, oh, man. All right. Well, um, maybe I'll see you guys. And if you're doing the, the camp shirt sew along, that's awesome. Um, yeah, right, Aisha, exactly. More yarn stores than fabric stores. Check out the guild. It's also guild.com. It's free. It's fun. Everyone's really nice. And um, you can uh, also join the summer camp so long. So that's true, Joann's. Yeah. Yeah, the print. This is from Hearts Fabric, by the way. And you do get 10% off when we find it. Is it this? Yeah. There you go. 10% off. 10 sozo right there. I got this from there. And they're quilting cottons. I would, I, I would put in like trailers or camper vans maybe. I love the way this looks. I didn't do any top stitching on the collar. I, that's kind of my favorite thing to do right now. I love it. I love how soft and still but nice and smooth and clean it looks. Love it. It looks nice and crisp back here though. Yeah. I'm happy with it. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I'll see you Friday or Saturday. And um, if not, I'll see you on the next live streams or maybe in the guild. Have a great weekend if I don't see you. And, um, and happy first day of summer. Does it feel like summer where you are? I hope so. All right. I'll see you guys. Bye.